because of the weirdness of this transition, I'm going to ask you some questions about these calls that we normally wouldn't care about. Uh, did the Republican senators call Joe Biden or did Joe Biden call the Republican senators? I think there's been some of each, Lawrence. Uh, look, uh, the vice president, the former vice president, the president-elect, I'm still getting used to that. The president-elect uh, <laughs> served uh, in the Senate for more than, more than 30 years. He has a lot of relationships up there. I think that's part of the reason why uh, people elect, elected him. They want to see an incoming president who can work with people in both parties, in the House and the Senate, and get things done. That's what they'll see. And that's what will happen as we move things forward. You know, right now, the bulk of the president-elect's time is focused on what new president-elects do. He's been putting together his team. He met with his COVID task force on Monday, uh, worked on the response to the Affordable Care Act lawsuit on Tuesday, met with his senior transition advisors about picking his cabinet. He's focused on his business. I think he'll spend more and more time engaging with Capitol Hill as the transition unfolds. He did have, today, however, have a nice call with both Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer, uh, focused on what we need to do right now, right now, even during this transition period, to get the American people the help they need to deal with the impacts of this coronavirus crisis. Okay, and, and last question about the phone calls to Republicans, and it's only because the weird the weirdness of this moment that we have to ask these questions. Uh, do there, are, are, we, are you not naming the Republican senators that Joe Biden has spoken to because those senators have requested that uh, their identities be hidden or that Joe Biden thinks their identities need to be protected uh, in this current environment on Capitol Hill? I, I'm not naming names because we read out calls when we read out the calls, when both sides agree to read out the calls. And he's having private conversations with individuals, and that's part of what he's doing. Uh, but, I, but I think the most important thing I would say, Lawrence, is that his focus is on doing his job as president-elect. And his job as president-elect at this stage of the process is mostly about moving forward on his agenda to get ready to be president on January 20th. I, I want to go to another question from Mike Bemily, and this is about the vice presidency, and this is about the way this White House is going to work. Uh, and Mike points out that you have been the chief of staff to two vice presidents, which I think, I haven't had time to check, but I think you are the only person in history who's been the chief of staff to two yeah. vice presidents, Vice President Gore, Vice President Biden. Uh, and and Mike's, Mike is yeah, wondering, like as we bill, all are. It's like the... Go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's like the Bull Durham movie where the guy has the record for the all-time home run lead as a minor leaguer. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Nothing minor league about the vice presidency, as Joe Biden has shown yeah, and yeah. Al Gore showed. Uh, so yeah, indeed. Uh, indeed. What, what specifically has Joe Biden said to you about the way he wants Kamala Harris to work and fit into the workings of this White House? Well, you know, it's interesting. They've had a lot of time together this week. They've been meeting together uh, virtually every day with the senior transition team to uh, plan on who will be in the cabinet, who will serve in high government positions. And you can see already the working relationship really developing. She is an incredibly insightful and trusted voice already by President-elect Biden. Her views are being heard as they discuss policy matters, as they discuss uh, the range of personnel matters. She's going to be the last person in the room. She's going to be the last voice he hears from before he makes important decisions. Uh, it's been impressive to see the, the range of experiences and perspectives she brings to this. Uh, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone who saw her a campaign, who's seen, her, who's seen her as a senator, seen her as Attorney General of California. But she has been a, a very strong voice, a very strong force as he starts to make these decisions. She's going to be a very influential, very important vice president. Uh, before we get to dealing with uh, Congress, which is going to be difficult, even if the Democrats uh, win 50 seats, you'll be at a 50-50 tie with uh, Vice President Harris uh, breaking the tie. Uh, let's talk about foreign policy that the president will have control over. Uh, and we get reports today indicating that there are foreign countries, leaders of foreign countries, who've been trying to send messages through the State Department uh, to the uh, president-elect. Those messages are not being passed on. How are you dealing with that? Well, again, uh, you know, Joe Biden spent a lot of time traveling the world, and a lot of these foreign leaders have his direct number. He's spoken to a number of them directly. He spoke to Prime Minister Boris Johnson directly. He's spoken to President Angela Merkel uh, directly. He spoke to uh, the Pope uh, yesterday, in fact. 
And so uh, a lot of these world leaders uh, know how to reach him. Uh, he is speaking to them. They are congratulating him on his election as president. They are looking forward to working with him. Uh, you know, I think, Lawrence, you think back to Saturday when he was declared the president-elect by uh, you know, the, the tallying of the votes. And what you saw, obviously, was dancing in the streets in the United States, but, but all over the world as uh, other people in other countries welcomed the return of the U.S. under a new president, a new vice president, as a global leader, as a country that's going to be a force for change, as a country that's going to work with our allies to help tackle these challenges like climate change, the challenges like fighting global pandemics like the one we're in right now and those that may come later, uh, you know, that uh, deal with uh, global security and national security. So I think what you're seeing is a very, very positive reaction around the world from uh, our allies uh, to this new leadership team in the U.S., a leadership team led by Joe Biden, who many of them know for a long time. Uh, we heard Senator Langford say he's going to take action tomorrow if Joe Biden's not getting the president's daily brief tomorrow. Uh, you, you know the Senate. What action can Senator Lankford take? Well, I think it's encouraging to see Senator Lankford and a number of his colleagues, including Senator Graham, others, uh, say that they want to see the president-elect and the vice president-elect get access to the highest level of intelligence briefings. Uh, so uh, I'll let them decide what actions they're going to take. Uh, what I know is that uh, the president-elect is the president-elect. He is entitled under the statute to get those kinds of briefings. The vice president is entitled to get those kinds of briefings, and uh, hopefully they will be forthcoming very soon. You are the only uh, White House chief of staff at this point in the election calendar uh, who does not, who has not been authorized officially to begin the transition to get office space uh, for the transition staff in the various agencies of the federal government. How is that inhibiting what you're doing every day now uh, since you don't have any of that access? Well, Lauren, so far, the inhibition has been relatively minor. We've been able to proceed with building our COVID task force. We've been proceeding with our personnel meetings. We've been proceeding with our policy meetings. We have uh, space that uh, the, the private side of our transition is rented. We're working very effectively and moving forward on the business. But as time passes, the unreasonable position of the administrator of the General Services Administration to refuse to ascertain that Joe Biden is the apparent winner of the election, as the statute requires, will have an impact. And COVID's a really good example. As you said at the outset of the program, we're in a COVID crisis. Uh, right now, right now, there are officials inside the Department of Health and Human Services who are busy planning a vaccination campaign for the months of February and March, when Joe Biden will be president. And so the sooner we can get our transition experts into meetings with the folks who are planning that vaccination campaign, the more seamless the transition from a Biden presidency to a Trump presidency can be. So we're doing our jobs. The transition is moving ahead. The American people saw this in public this week, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris doing their jobs. But as time passes, the need to get the full access we are entitled to and the full access that the American people want us to have, it grows each day. When Joe Biden enters the Oval Office on the afternoon of January 20th, will he find on his desk a stack of executive orders that you have assembled? And if he does, what will be on top? Well, it will be a, it will be a, a stack, Lawrence. Uh, the vice president, then Vice President Biden, now the president-elect, campaigned on a promise to take action starting on day one. Uh, protecting the Dreamers, for example, starting on day one, uh, rejoining the Paris Accords for climate change starting on day one, uh, reversing some of the environmental rollbacks that we've seen from President Trump and fixing some of the flaws in the Affordable Care Act that the Trump administration has imposed. So he is going to have a very, very busy day one uh, on that side of the ledger. He's also promised to start to take other action on day one. He is going to begin to implement his COVID plan, plan on day one. He's going to send to Congress immigration reform legislation on day one. So we have a very, very, very busy first day planned. That's what the voters voted for. I mean, I think it's important to remember, Lawrence, that more Americans voted for Joe Biden than any candidate in the history of this country. They voted for him because he promised them he would take action on these urgent crises starting on the first day. He's getting ready for that now during the transition. We're going to deliver on that starting on January 20th.